everyone. Uh, my name is Liang Yue from Arizona State University. Uh, I will present our paper in the whole greater than some of its parts. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Han Hong Tong, uh, Yong Wang from Hong Kong University of Science and, Science and Technology, Tong Lei from IBM, Dr. Nan Tao from Tongji, and Dr. Butcher from U.S. Army Research Lab. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle articulated 2,000 years ago that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This shows a synergy among individual elements that when combined can produce a total effect that is greater than the sum of its elements. The powerful relationships can be seen in a lot of scenarios. Perhaps it is most evident in teams, for example, research team, the new scientific breakthrough is increasingly teamwork, and also sports team, film crew, um, cell team, all of these teams' performance is often attributed to um, harmonic teamwork rather than individual capability. And studies show that people working on teams tend to achieve better um, results. As a side note, Google has a project codenamed Aristotle that studied its own team and figures out why some teams perform better than the others. Beyond teams, um, the such powerful relationships are also seen in other scenarios. In a common system, the whole is a system, and the parts are the individual joints. In stock market, the, the whole could be the major um, market index, such as Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the parts are the individual stocks. In community question entering size like stack overflow, the whole um, is a question and the parts are the individual answers that the question received. In system reliability, the whole is a system and the parts are the individual components. So all of this is concerned about the collective outcome in relation to each part's performance. From the algorithmic perspective, an interesting problem is to predict the outcome of the part and the whole. In organizational teams, it is critical to evaluate each individual's performance as well as the team's performance. In the emerging field of science of science, it is important to forecast a researcher, the likelihood of a researcher making a disruptive contribution and foreseeing the future impact of her publications. So the question is, how can we predict the outcome of the whole and the parts? So the existing work either um, develop separate models for parts and whole without using the part whole relationships, or assume that the whole outcome has a linear relationship uh, with uh, its parts outcome. On the other hand, Aristotle hypothesized that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So a natural question is how to jointly predict the outcome of the parts and whole by leveraging the part-whole relationship that is beyond the linear models. There are many two challenges to enter this question. The first challenge is modeling challenge. The part-whole relationship could be very likely nonlinear. In a stack overflow, in a community question answer inside like stack overflow, studies show that the impact of a question it is strongly correlated with the impact of the best answer that it, it receives. This is an example of maximum powerful relationships. The classic wooden bucket theory suggests that the collective outcome could be outbounded by it, the worst of its part, <coughs> by it, the worst, its worst part, which suggests that well, this is an example of minimum powerful relationships. And in teams, the team performance is often dominated by a few top performing team members. This example of sparse particle relationships. So all of these exemplify the nonlinear particle relationships. So how to model such nonlinear relation is a challenge. On the other hand, the composing parts of, a, of the whole might not be independent of each other, but connected via the underlying network. And such part-part interdependency um, may have a profound impact on the outcome prediction. And we have two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is that the closely connected parts might contribute similarly to the whole outcome. And our second hypothesis is that the closely connected parts 
might share a similar outcome themselves. So the question is how can we utilize both the nonlinear particle relationships and the part part interdependency to help with the prediction? The second challenge is algorithmic challenge. Both the nonlinear particle relationships and the part part interdependency can increase the complexity of the corresponding optimization algorithm. So it is challenging to develop a scalable algorithm with well understood properties such as convergence, optimality, and complexity. Let us formally define the particle outcome prediction problem using an illustrated example. In the example, the whole entities are the movies, the part entities are the actors, actresses. We have the feature vectors, so the whole and the parts. And we also have the whole two parts mapping. In this case, a movie maps to its participating actors, actresses. We can also observe the network among, the, net, among the, the parts if it, if it exists. In this case, it is a collaboration network among the actors, actresses. And the task is to predict the outcome of the whole and the parts. In this case, the outcome of the movies could be the number of Facebook likes or the revenue of the movie. And the outcome of the actors' actors could be the number of Facebook likes. Next, I will introduce our proposed solution to address the particle outcome prediction problem. So we propose a generic joint prediction framework called Hero, where we have predictive models for the whole and the parts. And we want the two predictive models to be coupled with each other. The first coupling is through the part relationship, which measures the correlation between the predicted whole outcome and the aggregated predicted part outcome. The second coupling is through the part-part interdependency, such that highly connected parts will share similar outcomes. And the last term is the regulator for the parameter. And next I will talk in greater details about how to model such two um, couplings. Let's first talk about how to model the part of relationships. Let us define a quantity uh, for each whole entity OI. Let's define a quantity EI, which is the difference between the predicted whole outcome using the feature vector of the whole and the aggregated and the aggregation of its composing parts outcome. We can then characterize a variety of part relationships by using different loss functions in EI and using different aggregation functions such as linear aggregation or maximum aggregation. Let's first consider aggregating the parts by taking a linear weighted combination of the parts outcome. The coefficient AJI is the weight of parts contribution to the whole OI's outcome. The other part relationships will differ in the loss functions using, used on EI and the different norms on vector AI, which, is, which composes of the various coefficient AJI. The linear part relationship uses uh, square laws on EI. Its intuition is that some parts play more important roles than the others in contributing to the whole outcome. And we want to point out that this formulation generalizes a few spatial couple relationships. So when AJI equals one, it is a spatial case that the whole is the sum of its parts. When AJI equals one over OI, it is a spatial case of average couple. That is the whole outcome is the average of its parts outcome. The above linear part relationship assumes that each part will contribute to the whole outcome, which might not be the case, since some parts have little or no effect on the whole outcome. The scenario can be seen, can be found in large teams where team performance is dominated by a few team members. And we instantiate such sparse part relationship using an L1 norm on vector AI which can shrink some part contribution AGI to exactly zero. And such sparse part relationship is a nonlinear uh, part relation. 
In some cases, the team performance is determined by not only a few key members, but also the structural hierarchy between within the organization. And we instantiate such part performance ranking in addition to the sparse selection using the ordered weighted L1. The above formulation all uses squared laws in EI, which might be sensitive to outliers. In robust part correlation, we use robust regression model to reduce the effect of outliers. Specifically, we use two robust estimators, Hoover estimator and bi squared estimator, and their formulations are shown in the table. Finally, let's consider the maximum part correlation which measures the difference between the whole outcome and the maximum of its part outcome. Its intuition is that the team performance is dominated by the best team member or the, or the leader. The aggregation of the parts is no longer to take the linear combination of its part outcome, but to take the maximum of its part outcome. Since max function is not differentiable, we use a soft mass function to approximate it. So we first apply soft mass function to the parts outcome and then use the spread loss in EI. We summarize the different part relationships uh, in this table along with its aggregation functions and sub-objective function. So um, apart from the linear uh, part relationship, we have also developed uh, several nonlinear part correlation. Next, uh, let's talk about how to model the part part interdependency. So the part part interdependency can play two roles in the outcome prediction. First, it can affect the whole outcome. That is, closely connected parts might shift, might have similar contribution to the whole outcome. So similar parts uh, with with larger connection width in a part part network can contribute similarly to the whole outcome. That is, they have similar coefficient AGI when aggregating the parts. It can also affect uh, the part outcome. That is, closely connected parts might share similar outcome themselves. So similar parts with larger connection width tend to have similar outcomes. So we use graph regulation to instantiate such intuitions. Next, uh, I will talk about how to optimize the proposed uh, predictive framework. We observe that the overall objective function um, is not jointly convex with respect to W, the parameter of the predictive model for the whole, WP, the parameter of the predictive model for the parts, and AJI, the contribution of the parts to the whole. But it is convex with respect to each one of the coordinate blocks while fitting the other two blocks. So we propose to use block coordinate descent option to, um, open, to solve it. So in each iteration, we would update one coordinate block while fixing the other two blocks. And in order to update each block, we use gradient descent or proximal gradient descent. In a table where there's the gradient or proximal gradient update, all the different partial relationships with respect to the three coordinate blocks. In the paper, we show some nice properties of the optimization algorithm. Regarding the convergence and optimality, we show that um, under mild conditions, the optimization algorithm converges to a coordinate-wise minimum point. Regarding the complexity, we show that the algorithm scales linearly with respect to the size of the conceptual particle graph in both time and space. So in the particle graph, there are n nodes to represent the part, uh, to represent the whole entities. There are np nodes to represent the part entity and there are MPO nodes from the whole to the part, and there are MPP links in the part part network. Next, I will show some empirical evaluation results. So for the experiment, we use four data sets. Uh, the, first four, the, the first two data sets, mass and stack overflow, are from community question answering sites where the whole is a question and the part are the answer that the question receives. And we want to predict the number of votes that the question and the answer get. 
The third data set is the BLP data set, um, where the whole is the author and the, pap and the parts are the paper that the author writes. And we want to predict the edge index of the author and the number of citations that the paper received. The last data set is movie data set, where the whole is movie and the parts are the participating actors and actresses. And we want to predict the number of Facebook lives of the movie and the actors and actresses. So for all the data sets, we first sort the whole analysis in chronological order, gather the first X percent of the whole and their corresponding parts of trend, and test on the last 10 percent of the whole analysis and their corresponding parts. <coughs> so to evaluate the prediction performance, we use root mean squared error uh, between the actual flat value and the predicted value. This figure shows the overall um, prediction error of the mass data set. And uh, we compare the following methods. First is the separate uh, predicted models and the joint predicted models using different partial relationships, including some linear max, Hoover, by square, lasso, and other weighted L1 norm. And we have the following main observations. The first observation is that uh, the joint prediction models generally outperform the separate models, which suggests that the particle relationships can indeed help with the prediction. The second observation is that nonlinear particle relationships, including that over by square lasso and all the weighted L1 norm, is often uh, performing better than uh, the linear relationships. The third observation is that lasso and all the weighted L1 norm, such sparse uh, partial relationships are the best method in most cases, which suggests that the collective, the whole, the whole outcome is perhaps most uh, dominated by a few often top performing uh, parts. And we have the similar observations uh, in other data sets. And in this figure, we study how the part-part interdependency can help with the prediction on the movie data set. So the blue bar is the basic from framework without using the part-part network information. And the green bar adds the network recommendation on the parts up, part contribution to the whole outcome. And the red bar in addition adds the, uh, the network recommendation on the parts outcome. So from the result, we see that the part-part interdependency on the whole outcome and the parts outcome can both help boost the performance. This figure shows the objective function value versus the number of iterations on stack overflow data set. Uh, we see that the proposed pro algorithm, algorithm can convert pretty fast within uh, 25 to 30 iterations. And we next study the parameter sensitivity of movie data sets. So we call that alpha controls importance of part-part relationships and beta controls the importance of part-part interdependency and the bow-shaped uh, surface suggests that uh, the proposed model can achieve stable performance in a relatively uh, large parameter space. Finally, we study the scalability of the proposed parole algorithm. Uh, this figure shows the running time work, um, with different training size uh, on the stack overflow data set. And we see that the proposed parole algorithm can scale linearly with respect to the particle route size which matches our complexity analysis. In conclusion, in this paper, we aim to leverage the potential nonlinear particle relationship to mutually uh, improve the outcome prediction of the parts and whole. And we propose a joint prediction model called Perot that is able to model the particle relationships as well as the part-part interdependency, and we propose uh, block coordinate decent algorithm to solve it, and it can convert to a coordinate wise minimum point, and it can scale linearly with respect to the part whole size. Thank you.